Greetings and welcome to the gallery. I am the host and curator, Robert Cooper. Now, as we all know, we are still under self-quarantine. I trust everybody's following the coronavirus protocols, which include staying your ass indoors. And if you do go out, keeping a safe distance of about six feet from you and anybody else. And if you have one and you can find one when you go out, wear a mask. Washing your hands. Now, as I mentioned in the last episode, staying indoors usually involves reading books or watching a variety of movies and television shows on whatever streaming service that you have. Now, in the last episode, I spoke about the various photography books that I have. Now, being that I am a movie nerd and I've watched a ton of movies, I decided to focus on some very notable characters in movies who happen to be photographers. Some of these characters are portrayals of real life people, others are just fictional characters. Now, I've comprised a list of about 10 photography characters in the movies and half of that list are war photographers. For some reason, there's an abundance of movies with wartime photographers. Now, I'll admit that a few of these movies may not be the best of movies, and they sure haven't stood the test of time. Some of these actors may not have portrayed photographers in the uh, most realistic and accurate way. And the camera technique used by these actors is very off. And there's also a few characters who have questionable photography techniques, but you might find them interesting and entertaining at least. So I hope you enjoy my list of notable photography characters in the movies. And P.S. I know the photograph was just released a few months ago and it's not on the list, but that's because I can't find any clips from that movie outside of the trailer. So that will have to wait. Until then, Take a look at these. First is Dennis Hopper from 1979's Apocalypse Now. The movie takes place during the Vietnamese War and Hopper plays, I guess, a hippie space style photographer. Basically, he plays himself because he was a photographer in real life and in every role he plays in, he's always acting spaced out. He spends his time in a movie with about three Nikon F1s wrapped around his neck and doing his typical hopper, hey man, look out guy, hey buddy, which he does in just about every movie he plays in. Apocalypse Now is one of my favorite movies of all time, all three to four hours of it, depending on the version. Nick Nolte as Russell Price in 1983's Under Fire. Now this movie takes place during the last days of the Nicaraguan Revolution of 1979 and was inspired by the real life murder of ABC reporter Bill Stewart and his translator Juan Espinosa who were murdered by the Nicaraguan National Guard in 1979. Linda Hunt as Billy Kwan in 1982's The Year of Living Dangerously. This movie is based on the 30th of September movement of 1965 in Jakarta. Now, when I spoke about movies that didn't stand the test of time, this is one of them. Hunt, who is a white British woman, won Best Supporting Actress at the Academy Awards for playing an Asian man. I believe they call that yellow face. And it is something that you would think wouldn't happen today, but Tilda Swinton played the ancient one in Doctor Strange who was originally an Asian character as well so I guess we're still doing yellow face. The Year of Living Dangerously stars Mel Gibson back when everybody liked him and we didn't know that he was an anti-semite and a bigot. It also stars Sigourney Weaver as the love interest of Mel Gibson. John Malkovich as L. Rokoff in 1984's The Killing Fields. 
The movie takes place during the Khmer Rouge regime in Cambodia in 1973. The character John Malkovich plays is Al Rokoff, and he is a famous photojournalist known for his work in Vietnam. Now this movie was nominated for seven Oscars including Best Picture. Ryan, I believe his name is Philippi, Philip, whatever, as Greg Marinovich in 2010's The Bang Bang Club. The movie is based on the famous or infamous Bang Bang Club which included Marinovich, Jiao Silva, Ken Osterbrook and Kevin Carter who covered South Africa from 1990 through 1994 prior to the fall of apartheid. The story of the Bang Bang Club is very complicated as it involves the documentation of the tremendous and gory violence during South Africa's march to ending apartheid. And there's so many issues that can be talked about, mostly white photographers and journalists profiting off of black pain and suffering. Marinovich documented a man in a town in South Africa being set on fire and then being chopped up, which he won the Pulitzer Prize for. Another member of the Bang Bang Club, Kevin Carter, he shot the legendary photo of a Sudanese boy being stalked by a vulture during the 1993 famine of Sudan. He also won the Pulitzer Prize for that photo. Carter actually ended up killing himself shortly after winning that award because of all the grief from the violence that he witnessed and you know the criticism he got from that particular photo. Matthew Modine as Private Sergeant JT Davis aka Joker in 1987's Full Metal Jacket. This movie was directed by the late Stanley Kubrick and it takes place during the Vietnamese War. And for all you hip hop aficionados such as myself, this is the movie that contains the sample used by the two live crew for their song Me So Horny. Pam Greer as Friday Foster in 1975's Friday Foster. Now anybody who knows me knows that I'm a black exploitation films fanatic. It is my favorite movie genre. This movie finds Pam Greer starring as a model turned magazine photographer who for some reason ends up investigating things that she's not supposed to investigate. It also has her in a car chase chasing after Carl Weathers aka Apollo Creed. Now why Carl Weathers is running from her when all she has is a camera is beyond me, but it happens. He's running from her, she's chasing him, and her only weapon is a camera. Go figure. This movie is based on the newspaper comic strip of the same name, and as with many black exploitation films, it has black nationalist ideology throughout the movie and it also tackles issues of sexism and black feminism. Anthony Perkins as Sean McAvoy in 1975's Mahogany. This is another black exploitation film and it stars Diana Ross and Billy Dee Williams and was directed by Barry Gordy. Anthony Perkins character is based on legendary fashion and portrait photographer Richard Abaddon. Perkins plays a creepy photographer who becomes obsessed with Diana Ross and even tries to pull off a photo shoot while driving a car which of course ends in a big car crash that he dies in and Diana Ross character survives. Alexander Rodriguez as Rocket in 2002's City of God. Now this is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. And yes, it has subtitles, but so what? We can all read, right? This movie is based on the Brazilian gangs and the favelas, and it takes place between the 1960s and the 1980s. And it was nominated for four Oscars. David Hemmings as Thomas in 1966 Blow Up. Now when I say this movie is awful, it is god awful. 
I don't know what kind of drugs they were smoking or taking in the 1960s, but for some reason, this movie won the top honors at the Cannes Film Festival that year. When I mentioned earlier about questionable photography techniques, I'm talking about this movie in particular. The character Thomas is the foundation for every creepy photographer to come in a movie afterwards. Clint Eastwood as Robert Kincaid in 1995's The Bridges of Madison County. Eastwood stars as a photographer on assignment in 1965 to take photos of bridges in where else? Madison County. While he's out there taking pictures of these bridges, he has a four-day affair with Meryl Streep. Nia Long as Nina Mosley in 1997's Love Jones. Love Jones is the greatest black love movie of all time. Every black love movie afterwards has been trying to replicate the formula and it hasn't worked yet. Now in the movie we see Nia Long's character do a little street photography. She works as a photographer's assistant and gets fired because she messed up the sandwich order. She does some portrait photography. We see her leave from Chicago to go to New York to land a gig with either a agency or a magazine company. I hope you guys enjoyed the list of interesting photography characters in movies. Um, if you know of any that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you're on Instagram, follow me at R Cooper Photography. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay your ass inside if you can. Bless and love.